Hey there, it's Brian with Brandstack.co and today I'm gonna show you how to customize our mini icon menu section. So we are here on the back end of my website. I've already installed the section onto my theme. We're going to find that theme and click customize. And that's gonna open up the back end of our website and we can navigate to the page where we want to add this section. We're gonna do it on just on the contact page today. Um, and we're gonna build kind of a, a mini collection breakdown um, where people can you know, look at all the collections and select the collection they want. So once we are on the page we wanna add it to, over on the left hand side now we have all of the sections that make up this page. At the very bottom, we can click add section and we can type in mini icon menu. And it's going to throw it down here by default at the bottom with this uh, dark gray background. Now this is one of those that has both a section and several blocks. So it adds the section, but it does not any, add any blocks. And I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna add a few. Um, I think we're gonna have seven. Now I believe you can add up to 12 blocks per section, uh, but for this example, we're only gonna do seven. So I'm going to add seven here, just so I can kind of show you what it looks like as I go through the section settings. And then I'm gonna go back up to the actual section and click it, which opens up all of the different section settings now over here on the right. So first and foremost, we can change the background color. We can change it to whatever we want. And don't worry, you can't really see the text when you go dark, but we can change that later. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna use kind of this light gray that we use quite a bit on our website. And now we can play with the background top and bottom padding. This is not referring to the, the padding above the section, but the, the padding within the section itself. So if I increase it here, you'll see it increases within the section background. So we're gonna keep it fairly low here. Let's go 65. And then we can change the left and right padding. Again, this is going to basically push the section closer together or further apart. So we could make uh, more padding, which pushes it together, or less padding, which kind of gives it a little more room to breathe. We're gonna go with less padding. And then we can choose on desktop the width of this section. So we can go all the way up to 100, which is 100% of your uh, container width, not edge to edge. Or we could go all the way down to 50 and keep it nice and tight and close together. You know, a lot of these settings come down to whatever, you know, matches your brand and your store better. Um, and then we can choose the icon border radius. Uh, and this refers to if we add an image that's square, we could increase this to get it all the way up to 50. Um, you know, I'm going to actually pop back in here in a minute. Let's Let's actually go into our blocks at this point and start adding images. Um, and then I'll come back here and keep playing with these settings. So we're gonna come over here to our first block. And the first thing we can do is select an image. And we're going to grab this black shoe. Now the cool thing about this section is we can also add a second image. So I'm going to add this purple shoe. And what that does when a second image is, is added is on hover, it will switch to that second image. So when I hover over that image, you see it becomes purple. Now, what we can also do is we can check this box, which displays the second image on mobile. So if it is unchecked and we go to mobile, you'll see that it is black and, and no hover effects on mobile, by the way. But if we select this checkbox, by default, that second image becomes the, the image that people see on mobile. And I know this looks bad right now on mobile. We'll get there. It's gonna look good by the end. Uh, so we're gonna change back to desktop view. Now we can also add a link to the image. Now I don't actually have a collection for shoes. Uh, this is just an example. So I'm just gonna put this uh, forward slash, which basically will just refresh the page, but it does add an, an actual link there so you can kind of get a fill for it. Now next we can change the heading text, which is this text right here, and we could say shoes. And then we can increase or decrease that heading font size. Uh, so let's go with, let's go with 12. And we could also, if we wanted, change the color as well. We're gonna keep it black. Now we can add a little bit of top padding. 
So see how this is pretty close to the image? We can add some padding if we'd like, and we can change the padding there between the image and the heading. We're gonna give it a little more room to breathe. We're gonna go with, let's go with, yeah, like nine. And then we also have the option to add some description text. Now, you gotta be careful here because if you have a ton of columns, you have very small space to add, add this description text. But if you only have two or three columns, that description text can be, can be wider. Um, so this is a pretty simple one. We don't need description text on this one, but if you do choose to add it, you can change the font size, you can change the font color, you can um, also add top padding to that one as well. But like I said, we're gonna not have it on this one. So that is our first block. Now, there's a trick here. Instead of going through every single block and doing all of those settings again and making sure that your heading and your padding are all the same so, so that it's consistent, what I like to do at this point is I go through and I actually delete these blank blocks and then I will, and I will find the block that we have customized. I'll go to the very top right and I will duplicate it in this case, six times to get it to seven. So we'll quickly go through and just change these to be the different um, images. Um, okay. And now that we've added all of our blocks, assuming you've gone through and added those links, the block portion is done. We're going to hop back into the section settings to finish up. So we're, we're here on the image block settings. Now the icon border radius, you won't really see this on this example because these images are already circle, but if they were squares, you could increase this to turn them into circles or give them rounded corners. Um, and then we can play with icon spacing. So this is the spacing between each icon. Now you'll see here that I've increased this uh, quite a bit and by default, now remember, they are they are forced into this, the total width that we've, we've set up here. So it starts to cut off certain things like square has been cut off, socks has been slightly cut off. If you like that spacing between between blocks, you can come back up here. You can increase the section width on desktop and then keep playing with spacing. So, you know, it really comes down to what you think looks best on your website. We're gonna go with a uh, slightly higher spacing, but we'll also make it pretty big on desktop. So we'll go 80% though. So there, so that looks pretty good. Uh, and then we have the option to open links in new tab. This applies to every link within the entire section. So if we want links to open in a separate tab, we can click that. Uh, next, we can play with mobile settings a bit. We're gonna pop over to mobile. As you can see by default, it's on a grid with two columns each. So the different options for this are grid two columns, grid three columns, or we can have a slider. Now, when we choose slider, we have a couple further options that we can play with that don't apply to the grid. So if we choose slider, we can then change the icon size on mobile. We can make it 40% all the way up to 100%. And then that becomes a slider that you use your finger to slide um, to the different icons. So I like to go smaller here just because uh, you, get a good view of each thing, but then you can also still see quite a bit over here on the right. So it makes it very obvious that you can slide. Now, when you choose slider, you also get this label beneath the icons, just to kind of clarify that you can swipe to view all. This is customizable. You can change this to whatever you want, and you can also change the color of that font to whatever you want. Um, and then you can also, increase the padding above that uh, label as well. So we're going to keep this on the default. We're gonna lower the padding a little bit. Yeah. Okay, and then 
Uh, we have our final couple things here. We can change these section headings. We could say, jump to a collection. We can change the heading size. We can change the heading color. And then we can add some description text as well, which also has an option to change the color. Now we can also make the section full width. And what that is going to do is override some of the settings, but when we click that, we still have the option if we come up here to section width on desktop, now it's referring to edge to edge. So if we make this full screen, this section is gonna go all the way across. It, it no longer uses the container width of the section. So if we make it full width, we can still make it 80%, but what that's going to do is make it 80% of your screen size, not your container size. So right here, that's pretty big. If we go full screen, it gets even bigger. Whereas if we are not using this, if this is unselected and we're at 90%, those icons are going to stay the same size regardless of what screen size I'm on for the most part. And it's going to stick within the container width. So we're going to keep that unchecked. We can hide this on desktop. We can hide it on mobile. And very lastly, we have the option to increase padding above and below the uh, section itself. So that is it. It's such a cool, uh, fun section to play around with. There's so many use cases for this section. We've seen people do a collection like this. We've seen people use it for uh, about us pages and sections and stuff like that. It's really fun. We can't wait to see what you use it for.